I'll call the meeting to order and we, what's the pleasure of the board? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion on the agenda that we pass over item 11 because of our um, Doug not being here. This is the having to do with the town hall roof. And I would also like to add an agenda item um, for the request of our town manager. Um, and the item is traffic control, including a request for road closures for Eclipse Monday, April 8th. Okay. And I'll put that in as number 10.5. Um, um, 10.5, okay. Um, <coughs> so we have a motion. a motion to accept the agenda as um, supported. Motion to accept. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, the ayes have it. And okay. So, um, first. Uh, um, I make a motion that we approve the minutes um, for the select board meetings March 11th and March 18th. Okay. Second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> the ayes have it. Okay, um, next up, uh, town manager's report. Seth? Thank you, Madam Chair. I submitted my report in advance, but I do have um, just a couple of items to highlight. Thank you for putting the um, extra agenda item on about traffic control during the eclipse. And uh, for the public, um, the eclipse will happen on Monday, April 8th, which is the date of the next select board meeting. The official guidance from Vermont Emergency Management is to consider only using the roads if absolutely necessary. So I would um, endorse that recommendation as the town's emergency management director and encourage as many people as possible to participate in next in the April 8th select board meeting by Zoom if possible by staying home. I, um, I intend to walk to and from work that day and I intend to either attend the select board meeting from my home or from the town office. Um, there will be somebody here though in case somebody wants to appear in person. The, the number that we were given and we'll talk about it later is you know up to 160,000 visitors in Vermont. In Vermont uh, that day. Sorry. No. There's a question. Okay, um, Susan. Hey, hey, how are you saying? An announcement is going to be made uh, somehow so the rest of the town knows. Absolutely. They won't be here. No, they, they will still be here. Um, I'm just encouraging people to choose a remote attendance option, whether by phone or by Zoom for that meeting. Okay, so you're going to make an announcement, that's all We I'm are going to make an announcement, yes. Susan, you have the illustrious uh, um, uh, opportunity of being the first person to make a comment with our new microphones. And so I'm going to just suggest that for anybody else who needs to speak in the meeting, um, Bill will set up a microphone at the front. And the real reason for this is so the people on Zoom Get to hear your question, and so um, from now on, if somebody would like to speak, um, when you're recognized, if you could come up with the mic, it'd be very helpful. Mm -hmm. Thanks. If you really can't get <coughs> to, I will do my best to repeat the question back. But you know. So. So other than that, Madam Chair, um, I'm happy to answer the board's questions or public questions. Okay. Any questions from the board? I, yeah, I don't want I was approved by residents on New Road and uh, said there was some work done on it. Was that the contractor or the town? That was the town doing the work. Did we ask the contractor? It wasn't the contractor's responsibility. Why is that? So the contractor, his responsibility was to leave the road in passable winter condition as an unpaved road when he finished work in the fall and the town agreed that the town would maintain the road as we would maintain other unpaved roads during the winter, and then when we'll come back in the spring and put it put the pavement down. Okay. When, you know when he's coming back? I do not have a firm date, no. I can check with him. I'm not sure what the schedule is for the asphalt plans. Okay, I'll check. Okay, um, <coughs> board? Nothing for me. 
Do we still have part-time plow drivers that come in at the store we did that? So this past uh, weekend we did. Um, uh, Jeremy called in both our retired foreman and um, a former select board chair and uh, his son. So there were three additional drivers um, keeping the, the snow off the roads. I think that you would have for that long of hours. No. Sure. I don't actually, I just I noted that the fire chief came in. I'm not sure whether you were called in to service. He, he was not, but he's been on the list also. Good. There, there's a short list. Um, any questions for the town manager from the public? Okay, none heard. We'll move on to the rec director's report. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I did not put a printed rec director's report because I wanted to keep it rather brief to highlight three things. Uh, one, we just had our third grand idol concert this past weekend. Our fourth is scheduled for the 17th of April. I encourage everyone to come down and pop. It's a fantastic entertainment for five dollars here at the town hall. Um, well, let everyone know that we are looking to increase. Uh, I talked about last week's last uh, report extensively that we had 16 hours of pickleball programmed for the Otter Valley North Campus, and a request is put in for another four hours. We're trying to bring us to 20 hours of pickleball. 25. She, no, another six hours. Yes. Oh, right, yes, and we had to deny one of those out of, out of, oh, okay. out of pocket because of the baseball clinics that are going on. <clears throat> and I want to let everyone know that we're extending baseball registration um, until next Monday to give people an opportunity. Because when it snows, people stop thinking about baseball. People stop snowing and start thinking about baseball. So that is my report. I'm here to answer any questions that anybody has of the record. Right any questions from the board or comments? No. Thank you. None being heard. Um, any questions or comments for the from the public for the rec director? Vicki? Okay. Um, none being heard. We'll move on to public comment and participation. Um, Vicki, would you mind coming to the mic? Well, I would prefer it was over there so my back isn't to everyone, if that's okay. Oh, just um, actually, the, the reason we set this up is because the conversation is supposed to be for the board, um, and we try to avoid having conversations specifically amongst the public at this meeting. Okay, well, I'm not going to speak with a bunch of people behind me, so I'll stay here and think okay. I do want to let you know that the people on Zoom probably won't be able to hear you clearly. <coughs> but frankly, we're having a hard time, seriously, we're sitting forward in our seats, it's very hard even now that you have taken the action to speak up, it's still really hard to hear you. If Vicki's back is to us, I'm not sure that we'll be able to hear her. That's okay. I just want her to make an informed decision. That's, I, I don't have a ton of control over the mics right now, but, um, but I just wanted you to know. Is it not wireless? I can hold it over here. Yeah. you worry about the door. <laughs> um, and I would encourage if it's, you know, keeping in mind, yeah, I think we're good. You got the, you got the mic. Thank you, Bill. Even after the recent revision of the town budget, town taxes are to raise over 10%. As a person who attended the recent town budget meeting after the initial proposal failed, these are my takeaways. I was highly discouraged right out of the gate by the new chairperson's opening remark of simply getting the budget to pass at the start of the meeting. But the biggest disappointment of the night came when the town manager stood up and pointed out that 80% of town residents participate in the homesteaders rebate program although he didn't win. As if this should even enter to the equation when figuring our town budget. It was a tactic all too similar to a car salesman asking one what they have for a trade-in prior to revealing the sales price of the vehicle. It was highly inappropriate and offensive. Honestly, while myself and about half the town questioned the need for a deputy town manager, Perhaps the better question 
is why Bill Moore is now the town manager and save us the $75,000 per set salary. Over $115,000 portion of paving is being put off until next year, not actually cut from the budget. $100,000 of paving is now being paid from the 1% fund, not actually cut from the budget. To quote former select board member Tracy Wyman, these are smoke and mirror moves to make people believe you have done your job scaling back the expenses. The only actual cuts were the one proposed electric police cruiser and mail-in ballots that are a convenience to area voters. A total savings of about $25,000. What was a surprise to learn, even for an individual who regularly attends select board meetings, is that the town is trading two cruisers for one. And for those who don't know, the remaining police cruiser in the budget will be a reoccurring expense for the next three years. Also news to me is that in a year when Social Security and disability recipients received only a 3.2% cost of living increase, town employees were given a 4% raise across the board in addition to the whopping $3.50 per hour raise Mr. Moore received for a newly created deputy town manager position. While this is being pitched as an enormous savings for the town given Seth's starting salary, the truth is that Seth's salary is in line with what Dave Appleton was his first year. This is an expected savings for a new employee versus an experienced one. <coughs> Dave's salary was $92,000 his last year and eight years Brandon town manager while he was running one of the largest infrastructure projects this town has ever seen. While this is a $17,000 savings for the town, the $7,000 increase in deputy manager's salary brings that savings down to $10,000. So while the town hasn't actually lost money on that this year, it has lost out on savings and experience. Eight years from now, we will be in the same boat we were in last year, plus the 7000 for the deputy town manager's salary, plus pay increases. Employee management is much more than crunching numbers. Experience and longevity are factors. Neither Seth or Bill are the persons who make this decision. It does, however, demonstrate the need to have competent, capable people on the select board. Your decision to reflect positively or negatively on the entire town management and budget. It is easy to be generous with someone else's money. However, given the near 3% cost of living raise for area seniors this year, in addition to the number of times this growing population is mentioned in our newly revised town plan, it is incumbent upon the board to reduce the increase to the town budget to 3%. You need to do better. You need to stop manipulating taxpayers with these smoking mirror tactics, or perhaps forfeits of the select board who pass the revision ought to step down. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Sure, Neil. Um. Thank you. Please excuse my back. I would like to make an announcement that on May 3rd, which is Vermont Arbor Day, we will be having an Arbor Day celebration at the Senior Center at 2 o'clock in the afternoon um, with, uh, I hesitate to say presentations, but I'll be making a presentation, proper planting methods, um, and there will be, for the first 49 or 50 people up to the, whatever table there's going to be, there will be a free Red Oak season for them to take home and plant wherever they choose. Um, not the public record. Why not? What? Well, they need your permission for that. No, they don't. I'm going to cut it down. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all. Great, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Sure. Um, I was going to say your last name, and now I can't. Bill Clayson's. Thank you. Um, is this an appropriate time, or will there be an appropriate time later to talk about the budget workshop, or is this my only opportunity? Um, number 12. Number 
Well, we will be getting to the budget later. So I'll have so the opportunity to check It may that. be better to have it all in one sort yeah. of lump. Heather, sure. can I just point a clarification on that? When we get to item 12, mm -hmm. will there be an opportunity for public comment before the select board votes to adopt the budget crafted mm -hmm. on March 18th? Yes, the practice is in Vermont for there to be um, public comment that's sort of at large right now, and then within each agenda item to have a, you know, but the, the, another the, public, the public comment comes before the vote, right? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, okay. Um, any other public comment? And anything from the board? Okay, we will go to number six. Um, and I think Bill can introduce this topic for the Grand Fondo request to use the roadways on June 29th. Oh, Seth, that, that. Okay. So, Madam Chair, uh, the Grand Fondo is a bicycle event that uh, has happened for a number of years. They come over Brandon Gap and then they turn north onto North Street and proceed out of Brandon. And they're asking for authorization to sign the road and have some traffic control assistance um, that they will provide uh, so that this race can be done safely. Um, I make a motion to approve uh, the request for, from, from Vermont Grand Fund. I'll second that. Any discussion? Yeah. Sure. Um, Mr. Reyes. Hold on a second, Suzanne. Well, sir. Well, yeah. Don't talk quietly, because we need to hear you too. The other end of the fire. It's only been 25 years. Oh dear, novice. <laughs> okay. okay. Oh, <laughs> my question is, is uh, this is the first I've heard of the race, um, and so that's fine. I don't do everything. But it's coming over Gosh, and where is it going? It's going to go through Forestdale um, and up so, 53. It's coming from Bristol and down over the gap from yeah. Rochester into Brandon. I'm 73, Susan. Oh, thank you. That 73 to 53. I yeah. didn't hear the 73. Um, I, I think Mr. Hopkins said 73 onto North Street, and then it sounds like it goes, well, out of town from there, I don't know. <laughs> out of town North. Right, yes. Okay, thank you. What? Okay, um, are we ready to vote? Yes. All in favor, say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Moving on to item number seven, the winter operations policy update. I make a motion that we accept the winter operations policy update. Second. Any discussion? None being heard. All in favor, say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Um, Moving on to item number eight, the Forestdale Shared Use Path Scoping Study update. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, as you're aware, or people may not be aware, uh, the Select Board uh, approved us applying for and received a grant to scope, uh, form a study uh, regarding the connector between Forestdale and Brandon. Um, Select Board authorized $10,000 of 1% money to match the $40,000 for the grant. A committee was formed. Uh, the committee is in the process of selecting a vendor to do the scoping study. It looks like we put out an RFP, received exactly one bid uh, from Des Moines King. I want to introduce this to you to think about at the next Select Board meeting, we'll officially bring the recommendation for the Select Board to approve, uh, likely approve the one vendor that to the RFP to help facilitate the scoping study. And this is for to to scope 
connecting Brandon to Forest Hill by way of some sort of multi-use path. Multi-use path? It will be off on 73. Uh, so all alternatives are being looked at. And, you know, if, if you look at the, uh, if you look at the alternatives, you know, we don't, we're ideally asking them, uh, the contractor to include off Route 73 simply because the idea of putting a sidewalk along Route 73 is nearly impossible. This is the first, this is not the first time this town has looked at this as an opportunity to connect Forestdale and Brandon with a walking path. And they've run up against this every time. This is the furthest, I think, down the path that we've gotten where we've got an engineering firm to provide some alternatives for us to look at uh, to do that. So this is going to be a months-long process that will end. The timeline has an ending sometime in the middle of next year. Uh, but there will be community engagement that's a part of this. Um, lots of opportunities for the uh, public to comment um, and so yeah, I just wanted to make sure again that you knew that this was coming down the pipe. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Bill, because I'll tell you right now. Um, Karen. Karen. Yeah. You have a no, I can speak pretty loud. I'm pretty sure they can hear me. It's more for the. Yeah. For the I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. We all. It's a little. Uh, <laughs> it's our first trial run. Thank you for your patience. Yeah. Thanks, Bill. Because 73 is a really dangerous road. A little on 73 near the dead people. People have died on the track on the road. And now we're repaving the bullshit and we're repaving all the way down to 73. All the log trucks, the semis, and everything you said is a shortcut. If I have a kid going to school at NSP, I would not let them run my right here by the on 73. Even though they lighted it, it's one track of the day. Thank you. And this is the work of a committee that's involved at Jim Leary, uh, Liz Gregoric, our highway chief, our highway foreman or highway division uh, chief is the member, the, our members on that committee. But again, this will be a town-wide involvement as far as the opportunity to weigh in. Karen, did you I have a question? Bill, you know, this is just a process question. Um, Whenever I hear that we only have one bid, my mind instantly goes to they got us by nose. Um, is there are there any other thing? I am sure we have complied with legal requirements to post. I'm not doubting it for a minute. But is there any way that we could, you know, the couple of us even volunteer to make some calls, um, tap other agencies? Just reach out and see if there are anybody else that would like to submit a bid with a very tight time frame. So through this process, this is something that we started back in the fall. Um, the RFP went out in plenty of time. We solicited specific agencies that we'd already worked with, as well as our municipal project manager it is the Rutland Regional Planning Commission. They did outreach that way, as well as posted the state sites where people look for this kind of work. We did a fairly exhaustive. We get you know they gave us the opportunity to solicit specific people, the people that we've worked with before. We sent it to all of them, plus it went out to all of their contacts as well. So this was fairly exhaustive for all the engineers that may want to pick up this work locally. But still, we can't negotiate um, two against each other, right? Sorry, the microphone, I'm pointing for the... Yeah, I'm not going over there. Um, it, it, it's still, I, I get you, but it's still, we lose the opportunity Playing two bits off of each other to negotiate when we don't have a second. I'm just asking if there's anything else we might try. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Patrick Ford? On item nine. On item nine. Oh, I'm sorry. Anything else, I guess, on, on the pathway? So I think we're. Okay. So this is just for information. Perfect. It'll be action for your next selection. Thank you. So we'll move forward to item nine, which is to appoint a brand of representative to the Rutland Region Transportation Council. Madam Chair. So the uh, board announced the vacancy as Tracy Wyman had uh, determined that he was going to finish his service there on the Rutland Regional Transportation Advisory Council. 
and uh, interested parties were directed to submit their cover letter to me, and I have a letter of interest from Daniel Snow, who is on our town highway crew. He's interested in being the Rutland TAC delegate, and I have a letter of interest from Jeremy DeSorda, who is our highway division chief, um, who is interested in being the alternate to the Rutland TAC, and I would recommend that the board consider both of those. Yeah, I make a motion that we accept those generous um, offers to serve on this board. Second. Okay. So um, the motion was made that we approve um, Dan Snow as the Double. delegate for the Rutland Region Transportation Council with Jeremy Sorda as an alternate. Um, all in Favor say aye. 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 Uh, the ayes have it. And we will move forward to item number 10. Madam Chair, um, the select board handbook that we were provided at the first meeting of the new select board year included the uh, appointment policy. So the select board had created a policy a few years ago that um, the select board would not appoint select board members to boards or committees that the select board appointed. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have occasionally in the past had instances where there was a select board member who was serving in a capacity on another board. Um, what comes to mind most recently is Cecil Rennish Schmidt was on the select board while she was also on the planning commission. Um, as a result of the most recent election, we have a similar situation where Mr. Ethier has been serving as an alternate on the development of the new board and has now been elected to the select board. So um, if that situation is to continue to allow the DRB to function so that they always have their quorum and so forth, um, it would be good to acknowledge that the policy be waived in this case. Okay. Um, and I, for my two cents, I would say that it would be lovely if we had another person, but also Ralph has been willing, so any other discussion from the board? None being heard. If we're ready to vote, um, oh, we need to, sorry, motion. Pleasure of the board. Yeah, I make a motion that we waive the policy and allow the street here to continue on the DRP. I'll second that. Okay. Um, item all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? The ayes have it. Okay. Um, we'll move forward on the agenda to item 10.5, which is the thing that we just added tonight about the eclipse. <coughs> Madam Chair, um, because this was a late addition, I would like to read the whole thing. Um, so that everybody has the same information. Uh, following the Vermont Emergency Management <coughs> Team call that Tim Giles and I attended virtually on Thursday, so I'm the Emergency Management Director and Tim's the Emergency Management Coordinator. The Town Management Team met in person with the heads of the Highway and Police Departments on Friday afternoon to determine what Brandon can do to prepare for the forecast heavy volumes of out-of-state traffic headed south through Brandon on Monday afternoon and evening. So the folks at BEM emphasized that if the weather forecast is fair, there will be a number of people coming to Vermont over a few days, like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, into Monday. And if they all come over those three or four days, it's very likely that the lion's share of them are going to all go home at the same time on Monday evening. So that's their main concern. They don't have huge concerns about the leading up to. They have concerns about the going home from. As we know, this will be during mud season. Um, so the working group, which was me and Bill and Jeremy and uh, Chief Chachin, proposed that the select board authorize the following measures, which are designed to prevent the backup of traffic in the downtown and to prevent stuck vehicles on money roads. 
Item A, uh, we propose to set the downtown traffic lights to caution and to station officers there to prioritize the safe and efficient flushing of southbound traffic. We know that even on a reasonably usual afternoon, it kind of stacks up in the southbound direction when the lights are functioning uh, as they normally would be set. Um, that's the main thing for the downtown, is just to keep Route 7 moving south. The other three are to try to prevent people getting stuck because their GPS has directed them on a road that we would you know, have local knowledge not to take, but they might not. So we propose that uh, you authorize us to set a Jersey barrier at each end of the no winter maintenance section of Carver Street. So the north one would be just south of the railroad crossing, and the south one would be at the bridge over the Otter Creek at the Pittsburgh Town Line to entirely close that portion of that road to all traffic. This is our most likely muddy town road. We uh, secondly ask that you allow us to post a road closed barrier at the Sudbury Town Line and at Short Swamp Road to close that portion of Long Swamp Road, but to leave High Pond Road open. So this is based on a, a lot of New York traffic gets directed into Brandon using those roads. This is often where we have trouble with oversized vehicles in the covered bridge. And Jeremy does indicate that Long Swamp Road will, will occasionally be muddy, but High Pond Road generally does not get muddy at grades. So there would still be some avenue open in that direction. And lastly, it may be um, advisable, and I would ask the board to consider giving some latitude to the highway staff um, to determine this. It may be advisable to close Stone Mill Dam Road if warranted. We think that there will be a number of people who come down Route 7 and take Lover's Lane and come down Wheeler Road and then think they're going to take another quick, you know, kind of short to avoid Brandon and that low spot um, just after you get the road also does get underwater um, from time to time. Um, so, I would say in summation that the eclipse is one of those events in which preparedness may turn out to have been imperative, or after the fact it may appear to have been unnecessary, but at minimum it's a good drill or exercise opportunity, and if the traffic volume does match the fair skies forecast, it may be absolutely prudent in terms of keeping uh, people safe. I have, so I'm trying to picture that section of Long Swamp. So you're talking, you go so out. So you're going through the covered bridge, mm -hmm. you get to Short Swamp Road, it would be the portion of Long Swamp from there out to Sudbury. That's that long straightaway? Yes. Okay. But you're going to leave Short Swamp open to the Corkscrew Road? Only because he says um, Marshall Phillips and so forth and into High Pond doesn't generally get money. Oh, okay. So, so I go ahead and I'll, I'll make the motion that the um, select board authorize um, the four items identified on his agenda item. And Charlene, do you have a copy of the agenda item? Okay. Yes, that's my motion. Okay. All second. Okay. Um, any discussion? None being heard. All in favor say aye. 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 The ayes have, oh, and I say I have. The ayes have it. Thank you. Okay. Um, we're we're going to pass over number 11 and moving on to um, the revised budget proposal that was workshopped here on March 18th. Okay, so um, I'm going to start by making a motion, and once we have a second, we're going to a discussion. And so the motion I would like to um, make is to adopt the um, revised budget um, that we um, arrived at at our workshop. Yes. That's my motion. Okay. Second. Okay. Any discussion? So I'd like to start this off by saying um, you um, Ms. Disorder, you, you uh, misrepresent our budget process to suggest that we only uh, decrease the budget um, by car. Um, taking $115,000 out of the budget by deferring a road 
is actually removing money from the budget because it's up to next year's budget to determine whether that goes in or not. And so that's real money that came out of our budget. Um, in addition, when we decided to use local option tax, that's money that's coming out of the money we're having to raise, and that represents a significant savings for the town. Um, the suggestion that um, we can provide the same services for um, a much less money is um, insulting. Um, you know, we have been doing this work for um, many years, many of us. Um, I've been on the board for five years. We've had a budget committee that has been active and, um, and has asked questions and been part of the process. We have staff that works diligently and that is not getting fat off of any money that we're giving them. Um, this idea that we're generous with other people's money, again, is insulting. Uh, I'm a member of this town. I, um, I, I try to save our town money everywhere I can. And um, we're not casual with our responsibility of setting taxes. Um, in fact, if we did reduce our budget to the 2 or 3% increase, there would be people in this town who would not like that because it would remove services that we're currently paying for. And our job is actually to find a balance. And that balance point is, in fact, not going to be as low as you want because you want less. But it's going to be what enough other people want, so we're going to have a balance point that is what the whole process is about. And so I believe this budget is very responsible, and I hope the town supports it. Um, I, I would like to raise one other point, which was that there was a reference made by Mr. DeSorto about electric p police vehicles, and there's been no decision made about what type of vehicles. So there's often discussion about electric police vehicles, and that's all that there is so far is discussion. We won't make any decision on what type of vehicle the police do or don't get until later this summer. So um, it may be, but it also really still may not be. That, that just, as much as it is a discussion, it is just a discussion. It's not a foregone conclusion. Yes, at the last meeting, I believe Seth said it was a Ford Interceptor. Yeah. It was, yeah, Ford Interceptor. Which is supposed to be yeah. It has been decided. Yeah, what's it? It, it has not been decided. Oh. Those, those are quotes that were received for the purpose of having an actual number that was realistic to build with the budget, to build the budget. Okay. Yeah, yeah you, I know you specifically said for it. I, I did. And, yeah. and that's what the quote we received was. Okay. So, so later on, and it sounds like the timing we can expect <laughs> the summer. Ish? I don't know. Bottom line is, the police chief will have to get select board approval for that, and I can just tell you we haven't been asked for any approval. So it just hasn't been decided yet. So it's a police vehicle, not necessarily an electric one. I just know that it may not make a big deal cost-wise into the budget, but it, I'm not saying it will or won't, but um, but it does make an issue because lots of people have strong feelings about that. Um, any other discussion from the board? Yes, friend. I think this is uh, very deceiving. If you saw a headline that said it was a 6% cut, there really wasn't. And people want to know what their tax bill is going to go up. And 13.4 to 10.8 is not a 6% cut. We're just deferring maintenance. It's a 2.6% cut. That's it. It's not good. I will not support it. Madam Chair? Yes. With, res with respect, every one of those numbers was incorrect. And I have the numbers to provide you. The proposed budget that failed, the spending increase was 13.45%. The revised budget that came out of the workshop the proposed spending is up 6.23%. That represents a cut of 53% of the increase. That's a cut of more than half of the increase. More than half of the increase was cut. <coughs> People want to know what their tax bill is going to go up. That's where it's I'm ready. I'm ready to tell you that. In the proposed budget that failed, 
The tax increase was 19.52% as published in the town report on page 9. In the revised budget, the tax increase is 10.7%. Again, this is a 45% drop from the proposed number. Points and percents are different things. It was correct to say that from 13% increase to 6% increase, there's a seven point drop in the proposal. It's not 7%, it's a seven point. Points are absolute, percents are relative. People want to know in their tax bill what it's going to go up. 10.7%. That's where, this is where it's deceiving. How is that deceiving? The number I had before was 13.4 down to 10.8. You're not comparing well, the same numbers. Go ahead. This is this is not a public comment. I got one, but this is just a point of clarification so that I understand this points and increase. A 10.7 percent increase in the town budget line on our tax bill. So that is, we also have an additional increase coming from schools. Correct. So when I open my pocketbook, I'm going to pay 10.7% more um, for the town budget portion and then some more additional from the, just, I'm just trying to make sure I understand, you know, all the componentry and we don't, we don't minimize it by taking it one little bit at a time. I genuinely am new here and struggling. Sure, Mr. Hopkins. So the key thing is that the tax rates, the tax increases, are not stacked on each other. So if the town is 10% and the school is 10%, that does not equate to a 20% increase in the tax bill. They're weighted. The, town, the town's 10% is going to raise that 33% or so of your taxes that is the town budget. You remember we had the in the slides of the town meeting, the chart, blah, 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 the high graph. So the school amount, which is 60-ish percent of what we pay, is going to go up some number that the school board is going to determine through their proposal. The town's portion is that one-third wedge, and that's the number that we are proposing in this revision would go up 10% versus what you had. 10.7. 10.7 versus what you had in the previous year. Yes, Ms. Rhodes. Would you mind using, I'm just reading through the um, the comments I can see on the screen and the, the folks who are on, in Zoom keep saying, we really can't hear the audience. So, I'm sorry to be in. Please don't forget that the state is also raising the property taxes. A significant amount on top of what the county and the school are raising. Can you explain that? Yeah. The state doesn't levy a property tax. The town and the school are the ones that create the property tax bill. And so the state... Well, the Watch that <laughs> map there. Well, the state, is, the state is saying they're raising the property taxes. And the state is saying that the taxes are going to go up for the state as well. And that was, that's been on the news several times. The, the state can change the income tax. Oh, they're going to whale us. But, <laughs> Uh, they don't set the property tax. No, they don't set the property tax, but they're going to excess taxes on top of what the town and the school are already going to tax us. So we're going to take a triple hit. Please remember that. I think what she's trying to say oh, is, is that, that could you do, I have to call by person, I'm sorry, just to maintain order. I know the microphone makes it tricky, but I'm doing my best. I know you are. And I love you. Thank you. Um, I think what she's trying to say is, is what's going to happen is the assessments. Because many towns across Vermont are not assessing housing for private people accordingly. And so they, they're only assessed, I'm making up numbers because I don't know, 20,000, but they're selling for 200. So the state, Vermont Digger, go look for it. Um, has said the towns must get better at assessing the housing of private citizens. 
And that's what's going to go up. And so everyone's going to get hit. Yeah, Madam Chair, so, so when the assessments go up, this is historically true, this is not a projection. When assessments go up, the tax rate goes down to generate the same amount of revenue for the town and the school. You can watch it on a graph, almost like clockwork, every time there is a reappraisal, a town-wide reappraisal, the tax rate will drop. Yeah. And then over time, the tax rate will inch back up over a number of years as the grand list erodes and as inflation kind of perks along in small numbers. And then it reassesses again, and the tax rate drops. So when we get reassessed, that's an equity measure. It's not a revenue increasing measure. It's revenue neutral. A reassessment is revenue neutral. It's to make sure that we're all paying the right share that's fair in our community. And throughout the amount of money. And throughout the month. Yeah. Sure. That's, that's the real reason for the reassessment, is if you don't reassess, different communities get out of uh, whack with each other, and the reassessment is meant to keep us all on the same, on the same playing field. Um, Madam Chair, I'm going to Yes, Mr. Clayson's. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for being tolerant of my Yeah, watch that, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I just appreciate uh, Mr. Giles comment about the local option tax and that you've already you are planning to receive that 1% additional money. So that's going to go into your flexible use to meet the needs of the community, not just for the paving, but other capital items that you're planning in the future. So you're banking on that 1%. And what we did, or what your proposed motion is, is basically carving that out of the $300,000 proposed tax increase. So I think that's real money, so thank you. However, I, I do echo that I think there's still options available for this board for lowering it further. So I have $49,000 more for your consideration. And I'll be the first to admit, I don't know what you need for the local option tax, but I would propose, since you've never had an appropriation brought for capital improvements for paving more than $150,000 per year presentation at town meeting, that you basically add, um, you subtract off another $35,000 for the paving out of your tax increase. So you would, in essence, have $135,000 out of the local option tax. So I'm proposing the same amount, $185,000 but only 50,000 raised in our tax bill. The other 135,000 come under the 1% local option tax. So I'm talking about 35,000 more out of the 1% for this year's budget. So that's 35,000 out of 49. Then I'm gonna go into the highway department. I don't know what page it is, but it has uh, new equipment and tools. I would suggest that that could be reduced by $2,500. To 7,500. Um, also, in that same section, guardrails, I would suggest lowering that by 5,000. That's, I believe, level funded. Uh, roads, uh, reduce road salt by 5,000 to the 2023 budgeted uh, amount. And then moving to buildings and grounds, um, I would suggest reducing that uh, by 1,500 in the tree maintenance line. So if you add all of those together, that would reduce uh, the tax burden by 49,000. I don't know how realistic that is, how bad the tree trimming needs to be done, but those are just some observations where I went into the budget that I felt might uh, offer some additional savings. Um, and I realize that 35,000 is the biggest part of that, and I know you have obligations for future use of the 1%, so I, that could be a, you know, a point of contention amongst yourselves of how you use that in the future. Um, so those are just some thoughts. I think if you did that, uh, and I'm not going to delve into I think Seth, you've done a great job presenting the increase on the expenses and um, on the tax burden. But I think on the expense side, I'm just going to say the expense side, if you were to incorporate that 49000 reduction, I think you're under a 5% increase in expenses. Thank you. Thank you.
quickly. So um, I, I would like to throw this over to our town manager in a moment. Um, I, I appreciate you recognizing this. You, you clearly can see both sides of this. And, and you did accurately identify what I'm concerned with, with taking more from a local option tax. Because um, in the past, it's been really important that that local option tax was available to us. And it's, it's done appropriate things for us. And, um, and so I'm hesitant to um, over, uh, overuse that, because we still need the flexibility to have some local option tax money that we can use for matches and things like this. And so um, I, I, I would like to have um, Mr. Hopkins speak on the, um, I, I appreciate the specificity. I mean, this is the kind of comments that come up during our budget um, committee meetings, you know, where people will go line by line and think, you know, do we need this, do we need this? And at some point, we start to um, uh, take a certain amount on the, um, recommendation of our, our road form. And, um, and so I, I'd be curious to know if, if um, our town manager thinks that there's um, room to remove these items from, from the budget. Thank you. So um, maybe going in the reverse order that they were presented, I, I feel like the tree budget, um, that there's two different tree lines. There's trees that are kind of dangerous that we need to get worked on because they're in the right of way. And the tree maintenance line is largely, I believe, to re replant trees that we've taken it's down. Cold. Looking for it's the cold here. The, um, <laughs> right. So we had actually discussed that tree line as part of like the overall tree program for the urban canopies grant and so on and so forth. It was it was part of the big discussion, right? The the tree maintenance line. So we had had 3,000 in it, and it's proposed to take 1,500 out of it. Um, it. It was for planting replacements. So I'll leave, I'll leave that to whether you think it would be um, wise or not. And going like to road salt? Yeah, and going like to road salt. Ro road salt is one of those very tricky things. Um, I felt like we introduced the winter operations policy late this year. It drew a, it drew a snowstorm. And then uh, we laid it over a meeting and drew another snowstorm. <laughs> um, the salt use, they, they talked about, you know, I, I met with Jeremy and Dan, and they used 60 tons of salt this weekend. I, I think the other perspective it's on super the road is that um, once we have it, we can use it. Um, and if we have extra, we have just more for the following year. It's not like something that's Except we can, uh, we're, we're limited in what we can hang on to because of the size of our salt ship. Right. So I would say salt is, um, it's highly variable from winter to winter. If you have a winter with less weather, you're going to have less use of salt. If you have a winter with heavy ice, you're going to use more salt than you would in the summer winter. Again, this is, this is based on historical um, experience of, of our road crew and our, our form. Thank you. Um, Mr. Clayson's, I see, but did you want to finish up well, I think before Seth I... Working on this list. Yeah, I'm sorry. Working on this. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so the guardrails, um, that one in particular, I would point to um, there's going to be some additional guardrail work that was not part of the usual mix, and that's related to the structures grant that the town is applying for and is likely to be at the right spot in the line to be awarded for the McConnell Road double culvert. So there's guardrails associated with that project. Um, we did go out to bid, if you remember, uh, several meetings ago, and we awarded a bid for some guardrail work that will happen in this open fiscal year. It's, it's more than has historically been done, partly because a lot of the guardrail work that um, had been proposed was not prioritized in previous years. For equipment and tools, um, they had bought a welder, like they're, they're trying to do more of their own repairs um, and rather than send stuff out. So that was a, one of the reasons why that line went up um, in the current year that we're in right now. And that's why they thought it was prudent to keep it there. They, they built themselves what they call a grizzly, like a, it's like a sieve kind of thing that they're going to push the road sand through and try and 
prevent it from clogging up their spinners and that kind of thing. They're trying to be very resilient, and uh, this, it's those kinds of things that are supported by that line. And the last thing about the paving, I think um, Mr. Clayson has explained it in a way that it, it, it's not doing more or less paving, it's, it's just changing where it would be funded from. As far as my own personal um, or professional input on the 1% fund, we would be getting, to, at 135000 in the local options tax, we'd be getting beyond half of what the local options tax collects in a year on average. And I would just, it gives me a little bit of pause because that's, we have nothing in the budget anywhere else for any capital grant matches, like our 20% for the structures grant, blah, 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 all these grants. We have been relying really heavily on the local option tax to provide that. So I just, I just would like to, if you do decide to go that route, I would just like to, to recognize that it's probably going to limit your flexibility in applying for um, and being awarded these, these grants that will require a local match that's other than in-kind help. Mr. Clayson's? Can I follow up? Mr. Hopkins, thank you for those responses. Um, the, the local option tax option that I was suggesting is really trying to have the town commit to not spending more than what you've been asking in the future or in the past as far as the, the appropriations, while at the same time committing to the paving projects that you've committed to for this fiscal year coming up. So if you cannot you know, use the option tax, I would humbly ask you to reconsider having an overall budget of $150,000 instead of $185,000 for the upcoming paving season. So that, that's one item. The other item I'd like to just point out, and I'm, I'm probably going to open up a can of worms for you all on the select board as, as far as what I'm allowed to say, so I apologize. But you have a healthy fund balance of almost $800,000. And what I just proposed to you is really nickel and diamond. You've got a lot of wiggle room. So I totally agree with what Seth said, as far as Mr. Hopkins said, as far as the local option tax. But I think you've got other levers to look at as far as reducing the tax burden to the extent of you know, around $50,000, maybe more, depending on the courage you have, of you know, cutting it close to the margins, I think is what Mr. Hopkins is saying. But you've got a really healthy fund balance as a backup. Thank you. Well, I would amplify that, um, Mr. President. Thank you for that, because we do have a healthy fund balance, and we're actually in a very good position financially as a town. We're not heavily um, in debt um, compared to other towns. Our, our town is, um, is, is in good shape. Um, we used the fund balance last year to reduce taxes in a way that I believe was, was the right way to go, because um, it, it allowed us all to pay less taxes. I'm hesitant to go back again um, uh, until it gets, uh, again, to where it starts to bump up against the top of our, um, our, our, our range that we try to keep that fund balance in. Um, I, I guess it comes down to it, you know, the, the board to decide how, um, how much we want to, to try to make that change. Um, I, someone else does. Thanks. Um, yes. Would you would somebody bring the microphone over here to the front of the table? So I'll tell you why. Um, it, it is it's intimidating to come and speak in front of people and to all of you. <coughs> Some of you have been on this side first, so you know that. And to put our backs to our ears. Um, feels disrespectful somehow. So if in the future we could do the same thing so that people can see and hear us, but maybe put it on the edge, I think that would be very much more comfortable. Just That's a, a good small, idea. Yeah, yeah, just you. a small thing. Um, Tim, you said just now the town is in very good shape. But I would ask, who is the town, if not those of us who live in the town? 
And those of us who live in the town have been expressing through very many channels in the last month or so that we don't feel comfort, that we're scared. We are scared because we have one wallet, and out of that wallet, the town is going to take money, town government, and the school is going to take money, and the state's always there looking for money. And it adds up to numbers when we see double digits. And when we see the double digits moving by one or two numbers on the scale, whether that be points or percents, we're worried. We're worried that our neighbors are not going to be able to live in their homes. We're worried that um, we won't be able to even get people to the services that we're trying to provide. It's caring, right, for ourselves and for the other people in the community. Now, you guys have achieved something great. I can stand here and tell you all the things I don't think you've achieved, but that's not what I'm saying. You've achieved something great. In the last few weeks, you guys have articulated this budget, one that, frankly, most people don't like right now, and that's because the new one hasn't been voted on, so I'm talking about the one already proposed. The, the majority of people weren't for it. That's why it failed. But you've got us talking. You've got people here that are asking questions. They're driving Seth crazy, emailing him for details so that they can read them and understand them. That's what I would hope that you guys sitting up here are thrilled about. When I see that it is on the agenda tonight to vote in the budget that was recast on March 18th, when there has been such a surge of participation, research, interest, and actually people not so much witching about the budget, but coming up and proposing, I think I know where you can shave a few. I think that's such a great thing that to see you guys proposing to vote in what was cast on March 18th seems to me just to disregard all of the goodness that you've done by getting people looking at this and trying to help. Mm -hmm. There is absolutely no disputing that we all own it that we didn't turn up sooner. There were budget committees we didn't go to. There were reports we didn't read. We own it. But we're, you got us now. So please, don't throw this back, this goodness that's happening here. People, we're trying to help. And we're not trying to help you because it's just you guys. It's because you're part of us, right? And the town isn't an inanimate enemy. It's the people. People in this town didn't get a 4% or 5% increase in their jobs this year. But evidently, we're going to give that increase to town employees. That's one that sticks in some people's craw. And it's maybe something that could be looked at. There are different ways that we could spend some of the monies that we've got in reserve and coming in through various different channels. And I would just beg you guys, please, you're smart people, and now you've got a whole bunch of people that are actually trying to help. Please don't throw away that opportunity. Thank you. under maintenance and, and highway and so forth, and I couldn't help but notice there were three places that stood out to me were uh, maintenance supplies, maintenance tires, outside maintenance. All three of those had vehicles at the end of them. And I, I guess I don't really understand what supplies or vehicles, tires or vehicles, outside maintenance or vehicles. Please. Yes. I'm sorry, Mr. 
Um, sure. So all three of those lines are for the, the main trucks and the excavators and stuff that, that the hydro department uses to get the work done. So supplies uh, would be stuff that would go on to you know, chains for tires, things like that that have to be added on. Tires are tires, and some of these are you know, extraordinarily expensive because of their size. And outside maintenance is when they send out the, the equipment to, um, like if they send the excavator up to Caterpillar to get work done on it, or if they send one of the Mac trucks to Mac to get work done. You mean it's getting fixed? Yeah. We're not renting it. Oh, no, I'm sorry, no. Okay. And when you're talking about the supplies, um. They do some of their own work, like they're able to do some of the oil changes and fluid changes and so forth on some of the equipment, and that would be in supplies for maintenance. And supplies for maintenance actually adds up to $20,000? Okay. Yeah. Is that what that is? $20,000? And I can understand the tires. Now, when I look at outside maintenance, I also look at roadside mower, and I look at things that um, the mowing is done in a couple of different places uh, under their own title, and it, it all adds up, and I, I don't get, how many times do we mow it? So they try so to mow, mowing, right? no, <laughs> so they, they try to mow along roadsides three or four times in the road. Three or four so times from, in the growing season. Yeah. So we're talking possibly June to November. Yeah. Right okay. Three or four times. That's all. Right. And it came to that. And so that's that's using our own equipment and our own staff to do it. Like the, the are you looking at the line that says roadside mower maint and it's fifteen hundred dollars? Yeah. That's, that's basically for buying replacement knives and blades and stuff for the for the mower head that goes on the side okay. of the. That's not the actual cost. The actual cost would be many times that if you counted the labor. Okay, so that doesn't count the labor. Right, the labor is all, in, all captured in the highway wages line. Okay, I think that, that's good. Under, so under equipment rental, we're talking about smaller things, this is almost $8,000. So, Um, that and the line above it, um, I know that's where we Contract. rent the Bacter truck. You know, that's this new thing that we have to do to um, clean out the sand filters that were part of segment six. Super expensive. Um, I, I won't. I won't guess the number because it will be wrong. Mm -hmm. Off the top of um, yeah, so contractors and equipment rental. Contractors would be we rent something that someone else operates for us, and equipment rental is we rent equipment. Like we rent, we will sometimes rent a pavement uh, compactor, and they'll use it ourselves. Okay. Well, that so that's where contractors fall. I have another question, and then the question is: is is the cost for paving? Is the cost for for re-roofing this building in this budget? No way on that budget. Right. And so do we have a cost? So we had done a request for, propose, for proposals, and I think we got five proposals. I think we had two or three for slate, and one for standing seam, or two for standing seam, and one for asphalt, something like that. So those came in. Um, the select board has considered them, and the select board set aside um, ARPA award money. So that would be not raised by property right. tax, but taken from the ARPA award. So we and have that in ARPA now. Yes. I'm oh, sorry to interrupt you. That's the vote that we were, when we were talking about since Doug right. Bailey is here. Right. Yeah. Just because it's that ARPA stuff. It's murky. And it's not coming up all the time, so it's not something we have to worry about making a habit of because if we get ARPA again, I would love to have that problem. That would be a great problem to have another million dollars to spend. But since since it's unlikely, we'll wait till we have all five of us. Yeah, yeah I know. I I'm, I'm, I'm supporting that but yeah. you know, I but I'm sorry to get the program later. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna be fun, but the other issue 
Uh, related to that is that I went into the history of the town hall. You know, it, it, it celebrated over 150 years. And it's the same group. Yes. Because it's a slave group. Yes. My concern is whether or not we can go with that slave group for another year and just keep patching those holes or tarp or whatever we have to do to be able to afford some of the other stuff that has to be done. And to also look at savings because we do have to the end of the year with the ARPA funds, right? Mm. Under the current guidance, we do. We do. But the advice from DLCT is that the current guidance could be changed um, without warning. The, the, the LCT's advice to the towns was to obligate the ARPA as soon as possible. Obligated, that doesn't necessarily mean spend it. Correct, yeah. You'll, so we don't have to spend it by the end of this right. year. We only have to obligate it, and then we have two more years to actually like make the project happen. Okay. So under that obligation, do we have any areas to look at in town that we really need to deal with that ARPA's money would cover? Yeah, and we, we, had, we had a long board discussion on that, and okay. we decided to put it to the town roof. Mm -hmm. And um, barring the, it's, it's possible if you can convince three board members to reconsider that, we could claw back that ARPA money and do that. But I think you'd find that um, the board's pretty comfortable in their decision to go with the town hall roof. Also, if you're interested, I can't pull it up right now because I'm not, like, hooked up. But if you want, I have um, Mr. Hopkins and I made a really nice like visual of what happened with all the ARPA money. That's pretty helpful, I thought. And and also I have just like a boring list if you don't want the pretty thing. Boring is always good. Uh, to to add to that, as long as we're holding this until the next meeting, when the chair returns, a larger discussion. Is there any chance? that I or the public could see the other projects that you discussed regarding what led you to say, well, we're going to do the room. Because I, I just sort of want to be more informed because knowing about roofs and slate, the standing seams and all that, and the fact that this has been standing here for 150 years plus, and I keep looking at the ceiling for, you know, for little spots that tell me, Oh, don't do that. Have to put your finger down. No, you don't turn, Sammy. There's right above you. my head. <laughs> yes, it's like I look at you. Okay, so that's one. You <laughs> You've got to have more. No, I, I uh, can answer to your question. I'm there curious are, of the um, other projects. There's lots of, of minutes about our ARPA discussions yeah. that actually oh, yeah. occurred over about a year and a half, or possibly two years. I mean, it's, it's, it's been a while, and so you could look at those if you wanted to see what else we could do. Well, about. I recall meetings. I don't recall a, a specific uh, 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 line of, we have all these projects, which one will we choose? We did which that. I didn't go to all the meetings either, but yeah, I don't recall it that. Process kind of a, that we, uh, sure. we designated our funds um, as we, some of which as we went along, because the previous town manager had some projects that he brought to us and said, can you use some of this? And we did that. And then other times we had a long list of things and we started to work our way through and keeping a certain amount of art aside. And the last step was the decision to, to put it into the roof. And so it was a multi-stage process of designating all the 1.1 million. I'm uncomfortable with that, but I'm going to accept it. I remember some of those meetings now. I remember some of those meetings. I'm still uncomfortable with it. Because once again, I, it's, uh, you know, a lot of people talk about why would you put in a new floor before you put in a new roof? There's some common sense to that, isn't there? <coughs> I, I will say my, my lovingly joke answer is that Dennis Martin is also retiring, and he was, like, champion of the bucket brigade <laughs> at least. So if he's gone, we really got to get on the roof. You gotta get another bucket. And and another Dennis Martin. Uh, no, thank you. You can do it. And Zoom people? It sounds like there's a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. I can't see who it is, but hi. Yes. Um, Trisha? Uh, hi, it's, it's Trisha Welch. Um, I would just like to um, counter what Mr. Giles said early on in the process regarding the budget committee. 
because the town budget committee, the townspeople that were on that committee, actually had no vote whatsoever in the budget. Um, the select board are the only ones that could vote on that. And a lot of the comments that you've been hearing and receiving were a lot of the comments that we did bring forth um, on the committee, all those meetings we had. And I would say other than the police dog, pretty much none of them were accepted by the select board. And, and you all made your own decisions about what you were going to decide to cut or add or the final budget. And so I just want the townspeople to know that a lot of these concerns were brought to the select board, were talked about, were discussed at length, um, but the budget that was voted was what the select board voted. So I don't think that all these comments are just suddenly coming out of nowhere. They were comments that we had brought to, to you all during this whole process that the, the budget committee went through. Um, and I think that if you want the budget to be successful and we don't have another vote we have to go through, that you really do need to listen. People are hurting. This economy is not good. And we have a lot of people in town who don't have money, don't have a lot of money. Um, and I think we need, just need to be sensitive to that. And thank you for letting me speak. Uh -uh. This isn't a variety show. Thank you. Any other comments? Yes, Mr. Clayson's. So I just want to be clear, Mr. Giles. I'm not suggesting that you put a, a line item to take out of the general fund. What I'm saying is that you should reduce at least $49,000 from your budget. Because I look back at the guardrail line item, you have budgeted in 2023 $6,000. Spend zero. Budget in 10,024. I have no idea what it, what you spent. And we're going up to 15,000. What I'm saying is you've got latitude in your budget items as you go through the year that you can manage to what you spent. And if you have a crisis or an emergency where you've got to put in your guardrails, you've got the fund balance to go back. So I, what I'm suggesting is that you go at least 49,000. Don't use the local option tax. But you've got other mechanisms within your within your power that you do every week as far as what you spend and how you plan. That I think you can carve out forty nine thousand and still have that safeguard and the fund balance. And I think you could even do more, as being suggested by the people here and by the first vote. But I'm trying to weigh the balance of you've got definite cost increases and you don't want to reduce services. So what's the happy landing? And I'm just trying to get it.
who will service our area. So we folded a number of projects in and to it together to make it worthwhile for bids to come in. So that, I was, that's what I was thinking, was that when we, I was trying to recall that, we had a few years where that had come up where it was difficult. So a bunch of projects had been saved up for that reason. Um, and then there They're was erosion town. from some, like, I can, I was able to guess the one that had erosion on the road where I grew up. Um, so I think regarding the guardrails, that was the conversation that we had maybe two or three meetings ago, I don't know if it was before, I'm sure you can remember that. So, so can I speak for a moment um, to your, your very well thought out suggestions about the road paving? And so um, the way we arrived at the new road paving amount was by removing one of the three projects, and that's why we got down to that number. And as tempting as it is to say, well, one of is what we've done in the past, let's have that again. I guess I would love clarification that um, the reason it's 185 and 150 is because that's what fits the two projects that we have. So the, the two projects that we have left are actually just slightly greater than 200,000, right? This is last year's number, but they're 203. Union Street was spec'd out at $166,000. That's Union Street resurfacing from the Otter Creek Bridge south to its end. And North Street was spec'd at $37,000 from Route 73 to the post office in Forest. So those together are 203. Yeah, I, I think my point um, is, is that um, to just choose a number and say that's the paving amount and, and not match it to projects we have, I think um, is, is, is not what I would consider a balance point. And, and the other thing I guess I would like to bring up, um, you know, when our budget failed, um, uh, it failed approximately 55% to 45%. In other words, there were people that definitely didn't like it, the budget, and that's why it went down. Um, if, if there were 20 people in this room, um, nine people would actually have liked the way the budget went, and 11 people you know, wouldn't. And, and that's why suggesting, because the majority of you here want to have a smaller budget, it's our job to try to come up with a balance for the whole town, the whole community. And, and thus, as I stated, a while ago, um, you know, coming up with something that will satisfy the people in this room is different than coming up with something that's going to meet the, the interests of the whole town. Yes, uh, Ms. Harlan. Mr. Bass, I believe that the whole town voted, and that was the 11 to 9. You did not put together a budget that satisfied the majority of the people. It's true. You are correct that the majority rules in this scenario you ain't got them yet. I know that. We're trying to help move you in that direction. And we've moved in that direction. Um, I saw one other hand, but now I'm not sure. Mr. Silence. Yeah. Um, for the, I'm sorry, the no, microphone. I'm the microphone. Uh, it seems pretty clear to me. The basis of the discussion that I've heard so far from Everybody, actually, that you're not ready for a vote on the budget that you approved. Yeah. That we need to have one more budget and we can go over it. We've had comments that were not um, made in as much depth at any of the budget committee um, meetings or at the uh, budget revision meeting. So I think it, it, it seems to be very clear that. that there needs to be more discussion about the budget before it gets finalized. My call for questions. Okay. Um, um, can I ask one question? Because this is this is a, a to me this is a very important issue because quite frankly I'm losing trust in the whole process because the numbers that Mr. Hopkins just outlined you've got 185,000 in one year. Considering on the, on the motion. What Mr. Hopkins just outlined is you don't have enough to pay for those projects because you're over 200. If I heard your number correctly, you're over 200,000. If you add 115 on that, you're over 300,000, which is more than what you had in the budget that we voted down. What gives? We 
Do you have a I don't understand the math. We have coming from the local option tax. We have a hundred coming from the local option tax. No, I'm talking about in the budget, it was a line item, 300000 What Mr. Hopkins just outlined was, we're over 200000 now, plus the one fifteen that got reduced last Monday. You're over 300000 which is greater than what you had in the budget. So what, what gives? The budget that got voted down. I'm, okay, I'm let's do that. Yeah. So Hopkins, you know, there, were three, there were three road projects that the highway foreman had right. on his uh, Mr. Hopkins just outlined there's two that remains and it was over 200,000. Mm -hmm. The third one was 115 that was talked about last Monday. You add those two numbers together and it's, I don't know, 15 or 18,000 over 300,000. Oh. You asked us to vote on a budget for 300,000 and it really was 318. Oh. Oh. I don't, that's why I'm frustrated. My tone is up a little bit. I don't, all of a sudden the integrity of what you're doing is a big question mark in my mind. So I agree with the gentleman who just spoke. I think you've got to circle the wagons and figure out your numbers. Thank you. Would you please stop the applauding? This is a public meeting, not a variety show. So what no, Mr. President just said is all correct. The $300,000 that the budget workshops had put into the operating budget to pay for paving was not going to ever complete all three of those projects exclusively from the operating budget. So what was going to happen was either a portion of the probably High Pond Road project was not going to get done to its full length and or the board was going to be asked to make the difference up by using either the reserve, the fund balance, or the 1% fund. So it was going to depend on how the quote, how the bids came in from the paper companies, but it was always um, it was always the case that the three full projects were going to be more than the amount that was inserted into the operating budget. Um, As a budget committee member, I would ask that there be another meeting to discuss it rather than voting tonight. Fund balance. So, in effect, 
there were $353,000 used in the current year's budget, which are not available to us in the budget that we are proposing for the upcoming fiscal year. So the $292,950 increase does not even get us to zero in terms of what an actual spending increase is because we started in a hole of $353,000. I'm not blaming anybody. I was part of that discussion. I voted for that budget. Um, we've been through many uh, budget seasons where we've talked about do we have too much in the fund balance? Is it time to you know try to keep it down a little bit by you know showing the voters some goodwill? And so the reason I'm telling this is just so that the board is aware that if you do have an additional budget workshop and you do further rework this budget, you're, you're already starting that budget workshop when it comes to order. You're going to be starting from a position where, in fact, because of that $353,000 that came from non-property tax revenue in the present year's budget, you're starting from zero before you start making cuts. So we're at a point where I would just caution the board. Um, we've talked about staff increases at 4% or whatever. That's true, If and the COLA for the senior citizens was 3.2%, but a year ago, the COLA for the senior citizens was 8 or 9%, and the staff was still at 3%. Like, over the course of a few years, this is going to be a balanced kind of thing, where things are getting corrected, things are getting aligned with the economy, but because we have to plan these budgets as far in advance as we do, it's not always going to immediately reflect the current economic situation. So I just really caution the board about convening another budget workshop when you have already created a revised budget that is less than a 0% of new spending. Thank you. Um, I think it's time to call the question. Okay, so the motion was to um, accept the revised uh, budget amount from the workshop in the morning. Okay. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Opposed. Okay. Um, the no's have it? No. Oh, the motion doesn't. No, no, no. Sorry. Yes. Thank you. Um, the motion doesn't carry. And so you can either put, you, you put it on the agenda for the next select board meeting, and you can choose if you want to to have another budget workshop between now and then. Okay. Um, revisit the budget approval at the next meeting. Um, I'll second that. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor of um, revisiting the budget of the the revised budget proposal at the next board meeting on what's that? Eighth. Say aye. 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 Um, that was unanimous. All of the ayes have it. Okay. Um, item 13, setting a special election date. Mr. Hopkins, I think that's you. Madam Chair, the school has set their election date for April 30th, and it's the prudent thing to do to try to match that so that there is one election. Um, I make a motion to leave, um, use that date. Second. Okay, any discussion? None being heard. Um, we will, uh, are we ready to vote? Yes. Okay, all in favor of, um, Setting a special election date for April 30th. Say aye. 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 
Um, the ayes have it. And we will move on to the fiscal. Pleasure report. I make a motion that we pass the warrant for $99,000.91 and 87 cents. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 I make a motion that we um, uh, pass this bank transfer for $99,000. I'll second that. All in favor, say aye. aye. Um, the bank transfer, uh, board members, is related to the town treasurer's uh, relocation of the town operating account.